Incorporated in 1881, Maywood was early on promoted as a delightful suburb with large and beautiful trees, high elevation, pure water, air free from dirt and smoke of factories, with every convenience of a great city. Colonel William Tecumseh Nichols, a Vermont abolitionist who fought at Gettysburg, was the founder of Maywood. He, along with six other New England businessmen, formed the Maywood Company. The name of the company and subsequent village was derived from the 20,000 trees that were planted and the name of the colonel's daughter, May, who died of typhoid during the Civil War. This prairie community was carefully designed along the Des Plaines River with only four houses per block with one on each corner. The initial structures were high-style mansions followed later in the 1880s and 90s by Italianate, Queen Anne, and Victorian schools of architecture. This three-story stone and red brick Queen Anne with wraparound porch was built in 1894 by a prominent local merchant and his wife. Finished with classically influenced features, the interior boasts an unusual carved glass in the stairwell. And a carved oak mantle on the fireplace in the front room. The radiators were adorned with cherubs in relief. The inner foyer contains a bridal stairwell to the second floor. It offers perhaps Maywood's finest example of Queen Anne wallpaper designs. Extensive restoration and period decorating were invested throughout the 1980s and 1990s. This prairie bungalow, built circa 1910, was designed by Talmadge and Watson, a prestigious Chicago area firm, for Elizabeth Aiken, wife of Henry F. Aiken, who served as mayor of Maywood in 1898. Bands of casement windows along with broad overhangs emphasize the horizontal lines of prairie architecture. This home is presently undergoing an extensive restoration. It combines the simplicity and practicality of the bungalow with characteristics of prairie-styled architecture. The L shape breaks the box-like characteristics of most houses. The Tompkins home is a vernacular house built in 1872 and is Maywood's most intact remaining example of a three-bay gable front house, once a common type. 
It was built during the period when the Maywood Company was first developing what was to become the village of Maywood. It also served as Maywood's first post office. Like so many others built in Maywood at the time, it was constructed on a large corner parcel of land. These structures were country variations of the workmen's cottages found in the urban core of Chicago. This prairie-style house was built in 1907. It is highly likely that Ezra Eben Roberts was the architect. The foyer and staircase are complemented by leaded and stained glass windows. All interior doors and windows are framed by wood moldings. Oak on the first floor, cherry on the second. The first floor is dominated by quarter-sewn oak buildings. The beamed dining room ceiling has its original hanging copper lanterns. There is a considerable amount of simple arts and crafts detailing. Robinson Home is a vernacular square cottage built circa 1902 and represents the simplicity of some houses built in Maywood. However, it combines the square forms popular in the early 20th century with the vestiges of Victorian detailing. Unlike the five houses built by the same developer and located nearby, There are reminiscences of Gothic trim on the gables, yet eave brackets and window trim are stripped to the simplest form. The Sorensen House is a Queen Anne cottage, typical of the style. Although basically rectangular in shape, its walls are broken by asymmetrical composition of front-facing bays on the first and second floors, the latter forming a polygonal turret with abbreviated tent roof. Textured wall surfaces are occasionally complemented by ornate windows. The wraparound porch features short, round Doric columns resting on stone piers, which support the bracketed porch roof. The front door is set off from the center, allowing for a front bayed window in the living room. To the side of the front door is an ornate oval beveled glass window set off from a narrow clabbered siding by elongated keystone detailing. The interior reflects the transition in style to simpler lines experienced at the turn of the century. The ample foyer features a chaperone's bench built into the oak board and batten wainscoting. Above the bench is a wide leaded glass window. During the day, Light from the southern exposure showcases the brilliant purples and golds of a stained glass window featuring a double menorah. A comparatively simple, almost prairie-style fireplace features strong horizontal banding with minimal tiles and earth tones. The dining room ceiling is set off by intersecting wood beams. This style is usually associated with homes of considerably larger size. This American four-square house was built circa 1902. It is typical of post-1900 four-squares, yet it has stylistic characteristics that are a carryover from 19th century architecture. 
It is symmetrical in its general appearance, yet it is more vertical than most of this style. The interior has two parlors rather than one living room. Its classical detail, influenced by the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition, is every bit as important as its simple 20th century simply designed built-ins. Built in 1917, the Masonic Temple was designed by Eben Ezra Roberts, a widely recognized Prairie School architect. While this four-story building is tall for prairie construction, there is a balance of vertical and horizontal lines, and geometry dominates the building's overall design. The interior retains a high degree of integrity in the upper floors where the lodge was located. Oak paneling and horizontal banding in the social rooms, prairie-style fireplace, and the upper story lodge room with stage and balcony seating are all intact. While this interior space is presently in need of restoration, once completed, it will be a true architectural gem. In addition to the architectural significance of this building, it is noteworthy as the only remaining relatively unaltered Masonic temple in the surrounding communities. Take note that lower floors, formerly office rental space, were completely redesigned and renovated and are now used for village recreation and general community purposes. The Richard Cloyver residence is of considerable significance because it reflects the full maturity of the Prairie School movement. This Prairie School house was built in 1913. It was one of architect John S. Van Bergen's earliest projects. Its low-pitched, hipped roof with widely overhanging eaves, asymmetrical massing, extended wings and porches are characteristic of high-style Prairie School. It strongly reflects Van Bergen's training with Frank Lloyd Wright. Arranged on a T-shaped plan, the house has many projecting and receding masses and voids. The interior walls are richly decorated with wood trim. The abundance of wall trim helps to integrate the wall surfaces and the ceiling. This accentuation of horizontal lines is the dominant theme throughout the house and helps to make the interior space flow through the large openings of the rooms. As a residence, the structure is oriented very much to the outdoors because of its many verandas and balconies. Carefully oriented to overlook a bend in the Des Plaines River, the house was built to harmonize with the surrounding landscape. The Cloyver residence exemplifies a movement in architecture, which helped achieve a new architectural expression. There are a number of additional Maywood homes listed on the National Register of Historical Places. These homes, along with the previous structures, have also been locally landmarked by the Village of Maywood's Historic Preservation Commission. However, there are hundreds upon hundreds of houses which are eligible for historic landmark designation. A number of homes built in the early 1900s were designed by Frank Lloyd Wright prodigies such as John Van Bergen and William Drummond. The architect Walter Burley Griffin was actually born in Maywood. Subsequent restoration and exploitation of this rich historical and architectural heritage bodes well for the village of Maywood's future economic development. <music>